Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And today we are going to look at the Jamaica Public Service Company and the fact that so many people have been complaining about their, you know, the exorbitant bills that have been sent to their homes. Now, for a number of years, uh, Jamaica has been having problems with the electric or the electricity company. We know that we've been going back and forth in terms of we moved from a public service company and I'm not sure it's a public service company anymore. I think it's more of a corporate entity, a corporation as most of our companies in Jamaica have become because you know Jamaica has signed on to the neoliberal economic agenda. And I think that we are full speed ahead and I'm not sure if we will go behind, if we will retreat. I don't think at this juncture that we are going to retreat. You know, since the 1990s, we know particularly under the PJ led um, administration, that's the PJ Patterson's led administration, we have been really following, you know, um, and I would say that it is robotically, sort of a robotic following of this neoliberal agenda economic um design now that neoliberal design includes what we call the public private partnership so you have where the government is sells out its um major entities like the water and the electricity right among other things and you have these very wealthy corporations that buy them up and these corporations make no bones about it are there to make profits they're not there to render service. Service is not their primary goal, right? Their primary goal is to make profits and nothing is wrong in making profits, right? Let me just be clear on that. There is nothing wrong. In fact, I believe in capitalism. I think that people should earn, you know, some profits on their investments, you know, because they have, they're the ones who have, you know, largely come up with the idea and they have put some work into it, right? And if it is not just given to them, which in sometimes it's given to them, yes, but, you know, people should get some amount of profits. What I do really um, do not agree with, right? Something that I find to be disturbing, right? And also to be repugnant is when we want to have or to make these corporations want to make obscene profits, Right. So let us say that you have invested like a hundred million dollars into something and then you want to make like 50 billion dollars, you know, and stuff like that in that sort of arrangement. Now, that is obscene profit. Right. And sometimes it is also impossible. But what we think is impossible is largely possible for these predators, these economic predators, you know, because that's who they are. They are predators. So they prey on you. And they make you believe that you have to sell your product to them. You have to monopolize the 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 um the ministry, right, or whatever product that you are selling in your country, um, to give you better service. Because one of the reasons why Jamaicans were not particularly upset when the Jamaica Public Service Company, among other companies, were sold off to foreign entities, was that they thought that the public service companies you know, these companies that render service to the Jamaican public were not rendering quality effective service. So they thought that maybe people in more developed countries will come there and they will render better service. But so often that is not the case. And if you come to the uh, the Dominican Republic, it's the same thing where their light also, their electric company has been sold off to foreign entities. Not as bad yet as Jamaica is, but it's getting there. Right. They are now seeing they're now reaping the consequences of selling your companies primarily to, you know, corporations um, of first world nation. So who really owns the Jamaica Public Service Company? That is what you need to ask whenever you are talking about institutions you have to go behind the scenes to look who control these people even when you're talking about your politicians right who control these politicians who are their major donors and what do these what activities economic activities or political activities are these donors engaged in you've got to always do your research before you can understand what's really going on 
in front of you. But so often we look, just look at what is happening in front of us and think that that is, you know, what is really happening. But sometimes that is just a minute picture of what is happening in the full picture. It's just a minute aspect rather of the full picture, I should have said. Now, let's look at the who controls, who is the owner of JPS. And here I see that, is, let us go to Reuters. Um, Reuters is Japan's Marubini set to take over Jamaica utility. And this was written in on July, no, August 9th, 2007. So let me share my screen with you so that you can see and you can read for yourselves. And I will attach the sources in the description. Now I'm trying to veer away from using YouTube sources because yesterday I used a clip from Kamala's speech and I was flagged on YouTube for having engaged in that. They were telling me that there were some copyrights problems with my just using a brief clip of from her speech, right? Which was something that, you know, YouTubers do. But the rules here change so often. You don't know what you can do from what you cannot do. So Japan's Marubini set to take over Jamaican utility. And Jamaican, Jamaica has cleared the way for a unit of Japan's Marubini Corporation or, or Corp to purchase a controlling interest in the Caribbean nation's sole electricity provider, the government said late on Thursday. Remember now that before the Marubini company came on the scene, we had the Miran company, that the Miran Corporation, which controlled that sector of the Jamaican economy. Jamaica's Minister of Finance and Planning said the Rand Company of the United States had been given the go-ahead to sell its 80% stake in the electricity provider to Marubini Caribbean Power Holdings, a subsidiary of the Japanese trading house, right? So that is what, so the Marubini unit will pay 800 million for the power company shares, which Mirant brought from the Jamaican government six years ago for 200 million, the ministry said, right? So they have to make their profits. It was sold for 200 million and this company has come and they are purchasing it for $800 million, right? Because that is the whole goal, not to really improve the service, not to render quality service, but to make obscene profits, profits that will, you know, trample on the rights of many Jamaicans, including your light bills, your electric bills will be soaring high. Now, let us look at this Mar Marubini company, right? Um, it's not Mirant, Mirant is US owned, but even though these, when we say US owned and Japanese owned, they're all in bed together. They're all in the stock markets and they're invested in this and that on the world stock market, right? So when we think about Japan and we're separating what happens in Japan and US, you know, you have to look also at the connection. Now, if you should study the history of slavery, the same thing happened during slavery, right? If you understood how the system of slavery in North America, in the United States, developed Europe, right? It's amazing to see the connections that Europe had with the American slave trade in the United States. Right, And you'd have thought that, oh, those days were, you know, the Americans had their system and the Europeans had their system, but they were all interconnected. The same thing with our financial world, right? Our financial world is largely interconnected, right? And that's why we have to be careful when we talk about Black countries and Asian countries and, you know, and European countries. But because when it comes on to the financial elites, you know, money transcends all uh, racial barriers, <laughs> right? Racial and social barriers. We've got to understand that, right? So let us look at the Marubini company. Who are these people? We learned that they are Japanese, right? Now, this is coming from the Taipei Times, and Taipei is um, in Taiwan, right? In Asia, right? And listen to what they're saying. Let me see if I can share my screen with you. And this information is coming from the Taipei uh, newspaper, the Taipei Times. And it says, Japan's Marubini pays fine for bribing Indonesian officials. So this company has a, has a history based on my reading of bribing, right? And they bribe the politicians and they bribe the financial elites. And that is how they get their contract. Now, I don't want to hear, let me just st stop sharing the screen here for a while. Let me say here, as I talk about bribery, when we hear about, I see a lot of videos up 
you know, online about all oh, the PNP were the ones who sold off our electric companies to these private corporations. But <laughs> whether you like it or not, it's always a bipartisan effort, right? Both our political, you know, houses, the 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 both political parties have always been involved. I'm not saying everybody, but largely most of them are, and they have signed off on these neoliberal deals, right? And remember now we say that neoliberal deals or the neoliberal form of economics is one in which private companies, you know, dominate the public sector and they tell the government what to do and not to do. And oftentimes the government has absolutely no power over what they do, right? They have to do something very obscene or something that has garnered international attention for them to even rethink their position. And oftentimes they don't rethink their positions, even though they have, you know, their nefarious activities might have garnered international attention. They are so connected that they know how to control the system, even the judiciary system, right? Because they have prominent lawyers and they are connected to judges. And most of the times, these judges will rule in their favor, right? So when contracts are being made up, when they are being drafted, we've got to read and our politicians need to read and to inform us of what is in that contract what are the stipulations but oftentimes our politicians do not read and if they do read they are bribed and you know they get large sums of money that they cannot you know decline all right so this is the quandary that we find ourselves in at the moment okay so here we see um let me go back to my screen and share with you so that i will not i think i was drifting away from the task at hand, but I just had to say that. Now we have here Japan's Marubini pays fine for bribing Indonesian officials. And they're saying Japanese trading company Marubini Corporation or Corp has agreed to pay an additional or an US 88 million fine after admitting bribing Indonesian government officials to secure a lucrative power project. The US Department of Justice said on Wednesday, a Department of Justice statement said Marubini and employees from consortium partner Alstom SA had bribed a high-ranking Indonesian lawmaker and members of the country's state-owned electricity company to secure a U.S. 118 million contract known as the Tar Tarahan Project. So that is what they do. They first bribe your lawmakers, your judges, and your lawyers, right, and your politicians that that's how they control you. Payments totaling several hundred thousand of dollars were funneled to corrupt officials in Indonesia by bogus consultants hired specifically to disperse the bribes, the statement said. And I am always leery of these consultants, right? And Jamaica is filled with consultants, even some of our own people who come from the US, who come from Canada, and they consult with the Jamaican government. And because they hold very prominent positions, we think that they are actually negotiating in the interest of the Jamaican people. But oftentimes it's business, right? It's nothing but business. And that is what we have to understand. It's very, very sad that Jamaica does not have a system in which we have access to the, the contracts that our governments are signing. So we think we just take them at their word and we take them you know, we believe implicitly in what they tell us. And we've got to really delve into the information. We have to, you know, uh, dig into these contracts to see what are the loop ends and what might be some of the deceptions, the deceptive mechanisms that are being used to exploit the Jamaican people. But oftentimes we do not know and herein lies the problem, all right? So let's go now to the, back to the source that we were reading about the bribing of the Indonesian politicians and officials. So money was paid into a bank account in Maryland before being transferred to Indonesia. So there's just, you know, Maryland, I'm sure it's in the United States. So the Marubini company also has 
perhaps a branch, whatever you call a subsidiary, in the United States. Narbina pleaded guilty of an eight-count indictment filed in a federal court in Connecticut on Wednesday. So they were indicted, they were fined. But when they've made those obscene profits, they can pay off, you know, the fine very easily, and then they move on. It's business as usual. Right? So being fined does not mean that they have lost. In fact, they have won because nothing will change the system. The system will remain intact because people often, after they have paid their fines, people begin now to say, well, the legal system is still, you know, um, fair. Right? So they are going to still believe what they do. And then they come back and they still do the same thing. And even if another company comes and buys off Marabini, the same system remains intact onto that other company's find, and then it continues ad nauseum, right? So that is what happens in that world of the public-private um, partnership that we are hearing a lot about these days, right? Um, let us look at this other one. Marabini and Alstom's corruption records cast new doubts on Croatian coal project warns new analysis. So this is another country. This is in Croatia. And they're doing the same thing, the same bribery, the same acts of corruption are being practiced in another country because we just read about Indonesia and their corrupt practice and the act of bribing politicians and legal um, authorities to win lucrative um, projects, right? Now, so we have Marabini and Alstom's corruption records cast new doubts on Croatian whole project warns new analysis. So we have Japan's Marabini Corporations and France's Alstom have together been chosen as the preferred bidding consortium for the Plumbing Sea Coal Power Plant project in Croatia. Have a poor integrity record, including several convictions for corruption offenses, which should raise alarm bells and increase vigilance among the Croatian public and potential financiers of the project, according to a new paper by CEE Bank Watch Network published today. And that is what they are about, right? Bribing of the court. So this is in Croatia, all the way in Europe, right? And they are doing that sort of system. Now, the Gleaner did, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull that up, though. No, normally the Gleaner does that. Yeah, it does allow me to pull it up, <laughs> you know, quite um, surprisingly, right? And this was government approved sale of JPS shares. And um, this is what the Gleaner is reporting on July 20, 2011. Cabinet yesterday officially approved the sale of shares in the Jamaica Public Service Company to Asia-based Korea East-West Power. And this was actually done in on July 20th, 2011, following initial company announcements in April. So you have the combination of these two companies. The shares were sold by Japan-based Marubini, which held 80% of the shares in JPS. That's a huge portion of shares to hold in the country. So you're going to hold the country at ransom. And remember now that they are not going to be, be held accountable to Jamaican laws. I am sure that in the contracts, they will not be held accountable. The National Light and Power Company. The sale of the shares means that the Marabini and Kiwip individually own 40% of the company. Right? That's what I don't understand because they're saying that the government owns 20% of the company. 19 to 20%. I've read many sources. Some say 19% that Jamaican government owns, and some say 20%. On the other hand, on the other hand, I think that they're saying to us that these companies, the Marabini and the Kiwip from South Korea, they own 40% of the company. Now, the 19%, which some argue that the Jamaican government owns, right, is not only owned by the Jamaican government, you know, per se, it's also a joint effort between the, Jamaica, the Jamaican government and also shareholders, Jamaican shareholders. How that is broken up and broken down, I really don't know. All right, so there's a lot of mystery in terms of who really owns the company. So if they own 40%, based on what we're reading, because they have 80% of the shares, 
then who owns after the, the Jamaican government and the local shareholders, Jamaican local shareholders who own 20%. So you have 40 plus 20, 60%. So who owns the other 40%? I don't know, right? It's just maybe I'm not mathing well. I'm not doing the math well, but you perhaps understand what I'm suggesting to you, <laughs> right? It is, there are some questions that need to be answered and I'm not sure I'm the best one to answer those questions. You'd have to ask your government, your government rather, these questions. Now, this is coming from the Jamaica Observer, right? Let me see if I can open this and um, begin this presentation. Well, begin the reading <laughs> rather, not the presentation. The presentation is in vogue, right? Is in earnest. So let's go now. We have JPS France 500 million investment, right? And that is what their 500 million investment into what? And I'm sure this is going to be talking about the clean energy. And whenever you hear about clean energy, always think about a hefty sum. The cost will be put on to consumers. It will be transferred to consumers, and that is what you have to understand. If you understand the climate change agenda, then you'll understand that. If it's this clean energy agenda, you are going to understand that it might be clean, but it's going to be costly. All right? So we have here, Japan-based Marubini has signaled that it intends to spend up to half a billion U.S. dollars, along with its equity partner, Korea East West Power, to build a new electricity assets for the Jamaica Public Service Company to replace the aging Huntsville power station in Kingston. The announcement was made during the recent visit of two senior Marubini executives to the island. During the visit, the executives met with the JPS executives and toured the facilities of JPS and South Jamaican Power Company, in which Marubini holds significant ownership. Now, listen to what they're saying. Looking forward, Marubini said, and its partners are committed to providing low cost, right? They always, and whatever they say, always look for the opposite of what they say or what they do, right? It's always the opposite. So they're saying here, looking forward, Marubini and its partners are committed to providing low cost, clean energy to the country and expect to invest up to half a billion US dollars to build new electricity assets to replace some aging power plants, a release sent to the media stated. And nothing is wrong, I must say, in modernizing the energy infrastructure, right? I think it does need to be modernized, but at whose cost? And is it going to be a point where they are going to modernize at, you know, and exploit the Jamaican people in terms of desiring to obtain obscene profits. That is what we are asking. And remember now we're understanding that it's a business. So don't come and hit me and say, that's the business and you don't understand how business runs. Yes, I do understand that business, you know, in the capitalist realm should be run based on profits because if something is not profitable, why have the business, right? But what we are here saying on this channel is that too often these are obscene profits and that it exploits our people at the end, while the service in most cases, you know, is not even effective, right? And it's not modern. So you have a modern infrastructure or perhaps a semi-modern infrastructure and the system is still not, up, you know, functioning in the way it should operate. Now, listen to what the Jamaica answers to the queries from the Jamaica Observer revealed that the investment is set to begin to be rolled out in 2023 and with a plant expected to be ready for operations by 2027. So please expect that your, incrementally that your electric bills will be going up. It was however not clear what energy source would be used to generate electricity at the plant that is to be built to replace the Huntsville power station. And why did the media not press them? Because this is an important matter for the people. However, in recent times, the JPS has committed to using cleaner sources than heavy fuel oil to produce electricity, including natural gas and renewable energy, right? So that is what they're committed to do or to doing well, right? So that is what they have said that they are about to do or that they're actually doing at the moment. But what is going to be the cost to Jamaican consumers? Clean energy, yes, but the fact of the matter is that if it's clean energy and people can't afford it, 
what's the purpose? Right? What is the purpose? Because we have been living with using whatever energy we have been using for, for decades, but probably for centuries. Right? And we have not died. <laughs> we are, what we want is a modern infrastructure in which people will have electricity 24 hours a day and the electric bills will not be as hefty as we are seeing it right now. We're not seeking to build a modern infrastructure with renewable energy or cleaner energy. And at the end of the day, Jamaican bills are going to be so high that they cannot pay their electric bills. So what is the purpose of having an electric company? A company that provides the nation with electricity? That is my question. That would be the, the, the intelligent question to ask our leaders. No, we can't ask the Marabini people because, again, they're there to make profits, right? They're not there thinking about the interest of the Jamaican people. Now, in light of that, I'm going to use this TikTok um, experience by this Jamaican Cuban. I think she's, well, she's Cuban, but she lives in Jamaica. Right? So I don't, well, she's Jamaican Cuban in the sense that or Cuban Jamaican, we say, yeah, Cuban Jamaican however it's said, <laughs> but she is Cuban and I think she migrated to Jamaica or emigrated to Jamaica around about, you know, early in the 2000s, can't remember when she said she um, went to Jamaica, but she's a very intelligent young miss and she gives a lot of interesting, you know, information on Jamaican culture, right? And sometimes she does also, you know, um, provide some sort of comparison between her Cuban culture, her native Cuba, and Jamaica. I think she's married to a Jamaican, I'm not sure. But, you know, I always like her reviews, very mature, very insightful, and she's a very creative um, content creator. Now, let us listen to what she's saying here about her JPS bill. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Yeah. All right. So, where is it? Oh, I, sorry. I, I I need to get back. I need to get back to her thing. Oh, I have to get out. Let me get out of here. I thought that I had her on the on the. Wow. Let me see if I can get her back. Okay. Are you hearing that? Just got like um, one day, I'm like, look at my life. How am I supposed to pay this? How am I supposed to pay this? Just got like probably about three, four days, five days, and look at my life. Babe. What am I to speak to? Why JPS is so cruel? Why JPS is so cruel? How am I supposed to pay that bill? Almost forty thousand dollars. Almost forty thousand dollars. But almost two months without the light. I must pay forty thousand dollars for almost two months without the light. I must still pay JPS this. No man, somebody needs to speak. Somebody needs to speak to me because I mean, I understand this. I mean, I know who to talk to. So I have to come to the Prime Minister. Yeah, and him no vote for to represent me. So I don't know who me to talk to with this. Me not me just get back like not even one week. I'm to pay all of this to JPS for nothing. This is so unfair. This is so unfair. Almost forty two. Yeah, so she's saying that for two months she was without electricity. And then the government is now, or the JPS company, has sent a bill to her of almost forty thousand Jamaican dollars. And she's wondering, what did she consume? You weren't providing the service, but you're now going to send me a bill of $40,000. You know? And as she actually says in the video, she doesn't know to whom to go, right? Who are you going to air your grouses to? Right? Whom are you going to air your dissatisfaction to? 
it's not sure. And we see a lot of, you know, ramblings by, you know, um, Daryl Vaz and, you know, saying that he's doing his best. And it might, there might be some sort of redress, hopefully, but temporary redress. This is not going to be a permanent redress. Okay, this is going to be temporary if there is any, because we know that election is in the air. So maybe they will do something for a month or two. But I can tell you that it is not going to be permanent because I am sure that the contract that they have signed off on is one in which the people will have to pay hefty sums for these, you know, renewal and the modernization of our electric infrastructure right that is what you have to understand i think that is what is going to happen so you have to look closely at what is happening pay attention significant attention to what is happening and then you will understand okay no dollars women are you this is so unfair And when you talk you go to them and talk to them they tell us that you have to pay or else them all disconnect the lights right this is wickedness, man. This is cruelty. This is and you know I have been saying this to you, and it's not that I want to say that you know my Jamaican state, the Jamaican state, is actually you know wicked and evil. Did something happen here? But the fact of the matter is that it is an evil state, right? It is an evil place to live. Um, people there are heartless. And it's like you don't have any form of recourse, any redress, any justice. So people do whatever they want to do. So hence, so even the, the, the whole matter of what is happening in the with the Jamaican company, the Jamaican Public Service Company, that these are also acts of corruption and they are also acts of criminality. Right. This is what we don't want to be. Th these th these are sort of legal criminal activities and actions in Jamaica where a corporation, you know, that is world renowned can just go down there and just fleece huge sums of money from its poor consumers. And then pretend as if they are important people. Right. Who are connected to very um, powerful people in the world. But this is what we're talking about. Criminality does not only mean somebody shooting up a man. And that's what I think we believe. Criminality also includes examples as what we are highlighting here, where they're overcharging consumers. Because the lady is suggesting here, and I'm sure she's not lying, that she had not had electricity because of Hurricane Beryl for two months. And JPS sent her a bill of $40,000. Right? Now, is are they living in the real world? Right? But Jamaica is like a laser house, right? It's almost like it is a cemetery for, you know, hardened criminal. A sanctuary, I should say. It's not even a cemetery. It's a sanctuary for hardened and seasoned criminals because this is real criminality. Okay? Now, let us see if we can finish what she's saying, just to end the video here, because we just want to highlight this particular young lady, what she's suggesting. Very interesting sort of description and, you know. Cruelty. Come on, Mr. Prime Minister, you please, please, sir, you need to say something or do something. You have to do something to this. This is wickedness. Mm -hmm. This is wicked wickedness, man. Okay. We're wicked. Yeah. Not even a week since they get back in line. Not even a week, um, sir. Right. You want to tell me, sir, JPS, JPS don't know, sir. I never have no light. Because if they cut off my light, they stay in office and cut it off. So they know whether I have light, yes or no. So why they say, no, this bill come give me? Why they say, no, this bill come give me? Who will pay for that? Hmm? Who will pay for that? This is wickedness. It's tired, it's stressed out, it can't take it. This is wickedness. This is wickedness. Why JPS send this bill come give me? Yeah. 
So if somebody can share this with Prime Minister, please do. Please, me a big one. Share this to the region, Prime Minister. This 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 is a wickedness. Who wants without life? I'm here to see this. Who wants without the I'm still have the paper? This makes sense. And it's like you don't have nobody to talk. It's like you don't have nobody to talk. Mm -hmm. It's not with you. Yeah. Why should I give Jesus this? I was part of the world. Yeah. Not at all. I not at all. Why should I give Father. For what? Somebody can come and the Prime Minister or the Darren Ball needs to address it. It's not a big one, guys. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, I like the decency about this um, Cuban, um, you know, she's now Cuban Jamaican. I like her decency and her civility. And I think that as Jamaicans, we can copy something from her you know she's using the jamaican creole but she's not getting into using indecent language right and being disrespectful to the prime minister and saying who the prime minister should go and what he should do to his body and his mother's body she's not engaging herself in that sort of degrading derogatory type of behavior right she's simply lodging her complaint in a very respectful and decent manner and also emotional man, which requires, you know, which is very effective, I should say, right? So we can really copy a page from her book, right? That is the way how it should be done. Put yourself together and get on the media. But remember that you're publicizing this in the world, myself included. Whatever video I make, I am selling myself to the world and whatever you see will remain there forever. Even when you have deleted these information, it's still on the internet. Do you know that? All right? So do not make, you know, nonsensical gestures and using very obscene language to air your grouses. Right? She aired her grouses intelligently, and it was also done in an effective manner. And the prime minister, if he listens to it, even he is going to be a bit touched, I'm sure, by what she had to say, right? So let us really follow in her footsteps. Now, so that is what I have to say. I, my, you know, when I think about Jamaica, when I, you know, talk about Jamaica, tears really are in my eyes because you realize that the people have nobody to defend them. There's nobody there to defend them. And as she suggested, is either you pay or the services will be disconnected. And who wants to live in, in darkness? And I'm sure she perhaps has her online, she's on TikTok, so maybe she's doing her online business. So electricity is very, very important for her to have, right? So she might be forced to pay it unless the government does something miraculous at the moment, right? But I don't know because I think the the electric company, Marubini, along with his South, Korean partner, they were suggesting yesterday, based on what I read in the newspaper, that the cost of energy has gone up. And, you know, our devalued currency is not going to help. Right? It's just not going to help. So they, they are suggesting that that's the reason for which the people are receiving those hefty bills. So they're not even remorseful about what has been done. They're already justifying the reason for which people, consumers, Jamaican consumers are receiving those exorbitant electric bills, right? 
So I think we have to we have to pray, we have to ask God for help, we have to ask God for divine intervention, but also we have to accept the reality and say these are the social and economic realities. These are the political realities and we have to confront them. We have to ensure or we have to make the government understand that we know the ploys, we know the deceptions, we know the skullduggery, everything that they do behind the scenes. You have to inform yourself. Stop, you know, just following entertainment reports about Vance Carter and begin to educate yourselves about these things so that you'll be able to stand up to the government. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like, share, and subscribe. Remember now to like and send a comment so that it can trigger the algorithms to move the video along. YouTube is now having this rule that if you do not like and you don't leave a comment, the videos are going to be hidden. And they are hidden, right? They're almost put in a prison, a jail, where they will not be dispersed to the world. Thank you so much for joining. See you then.